Okay, so this video looks at solving with logs, okay? So in other words, when you have equations with logs in them. Now there's two approaches here, okay? The first one is where you have an equation with logs um, and what you do is you tidy up everything on the left hand side. Again, using your laws of logs will help you tidy up what you're given in the equation and tidy up what you have on the right hand side and provided they're in the same base. Once you get it all tidied up so you've got log of something in a base on the left hand side and then tidy up the right hand side so you have log of something else but in the same base on the right hand side, then what you can deduce then is that those two things must be equivalent. So it's a little bit like the approach that we take when we're solving for um, our indices, what we did up to junior cert level. When we were solving for those powers up to junior cert level, we had to get our left hand side looking like our right hand side, and then we could pull out what was equal. This is a little bit like that approach. We'll tidy up everything on the left hand side so you've just got a log in the base, and tidy up everything on the right hand side so you just kind of log in the same base, and then of course you can pull out what's equal. Or, now depending on what way the equation is given to you, it might be easier for you to be able to tidy everything up so that you have log of something in a base equal to something, okay? I'm just gonna use the example of base A there. And of course, if you have it in that form where you have log of something in a base equal to a, a particular value or expression, then if you just change it then to power form, of course you will have this and then just by having it tidied up all into nice log form and converting it then into power form it'll become really easy to solve. So there's your two approaches either you're tidying up the left hand side and tidying up the right hand side so that you get the match quite up nicely so you can pull out what's equal or you're going to tidy it all up so that you've got log of something in a base equal to just something okay on the right hand side and you can just convert it to power form and then it should all fall into place. Okay so there's your two approaches. Let's jump straight into some questions so we can see this in action. Okay, so let's try this question. So we can see here we have uh, the addition of two logs. So what we can do straight away there is apply our first law of logs, which says that if you have two logs that are added, then you can multiply these two things together. And that's equal to two. Okay, so tidying that up, we have log of two x squared in the base four is equal to two. Now, out of our two approaches, it looks like we're going down this road, okay? Because we have it now as log of something in a base is equal to something. So we're going to just convert it now to power form. So to do that then, of course, take the base. That's what's being raised. 2 is obviously the power. Log is always equal to the power. Uh, and therefore, that is equal to what we have here, 2x squared. So that gives you 16 is equal to 2x squared. Okay, then divide both sides by 2, and I get x squared is equal to 8, and therefore x is equal to, don't forget, plus or minus the square root of 8. No matter, whenever you have a power of 2, you're always going to get two solutions. So that's why we have to consider both the plus and the minus root 8 uh, for our answers for x. Okay, uh, let's try this question. Now, if they don't specify a base in a question, it implies that the base is 10, okay? So they are all in the same base because none of them are specified, which implies each of these logs are in the base 10. It's referred to as the common log, okay? Log in the base 10 is referred to the common log. So they sometimes put in the 10, but they can leave it out completely. So if you ever see a log without a base, uh, take it, it's a base 10. So given, as I said, that they are all without a base specified, which means they all must be log in the base 10, the good news is I have the same base for all of them. Okay, pause the video and see how you get on with solving this equation. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go straight ahead and I'm going to apply my second law of logs where when you have sub the subtraction of two logs, we can divide these two here. So I have log of 2x divide by x minus 7 equal to the log of 3. Now this one is of course like our first approach if we remind ourselves of that where we have logs on both sides so we're going to have to tidy it up on the left hand side and tidy up on the right hand side and then if we have logs on both sides in the same basis we can pull these out two out to be equal so that's exactly what i'm going to do here they are both in base 10 so i have the left hand side looking like the right hand side which means then that the 2x divided by x minus 7 must be equivalent to the 3. And now what I can do, of course, given that I have a divide by x minus 7 in an equation, immediately what I'm going to want to do is get rid of that. So to get rid of a divide by x minus 7, I'm going to multiply by x minus 7. But of course, if I do that to the left hand side, I'm going to want to do that to the right hand side. So that will get rid of that, which will leave me with 2x on the left hand side. And then I can multiply out my right hand side. I end up with 3x minus uh, 21. OK, so then what I have is I can take away 3x from both sides here and I have minus x is equal to minus 21, which implies, of course, that x is equal to 21. OK, let's try this question. So pause the video and see how you get on with this. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to deal with this here. Remember, you can't do any simplifying using your laws of logs if you have something in front of the log like this. So immediately I'm going to apply the third law of log which says that through something down here multiplied we can bring it up as a power. So that is equivalent to x squared in the base 3. Okay, 2 log x in the base 3 is equivalent to log x squared in the base 3. So then I have minus log of 18 minus x in the base 3 equals to 1. Okay, so now what I can do is apply my second law of logs where you are subtracting two logs. What we can do with that is we can divide these two. So that is equivalent to x squared over 18 minus x is equal to 1. So it's clear that we're going down the route of this approach here, okay, where we're going to get it in power form because we don't have logs on either side. So I'm going to convert to power form now. And so what is the base? The base is 3. That's what's being raised. 1 is obviously what the log is equal to. Therefore, the power is equal to then this x squared over 18 minus x. So again, now I have an equation. I have this divide by 18 minus x. So immediately I'm going to want to get rid of that. So to get rid of a divide by 18 minus x, I'm going to multiply by 18 minus x. On that right hand side and that will get rid of that. Of course if I multiply the right hand side by 18 minus x I'm going to have to multiply the left hand side by 18 minus x. Sorry there I've just crossed out the 1 but of course 3 to the power of the 1 is 3 to the power of 1 is 3 anyway so I'm kind of skipping two, two steps in one go there. Uh, so now 3 times 18 uh, and then 3 times minus x, don't forget you're going to have to multiply out there. So we get 54 when we multiply 3 by 18, and 3 times minus x is minus 3x. As I said, just to recap there, that uh, I crossed out the power of 1 because, of course, 3 to the power of 1 is the same as 3. So I, I was okay that I didn't need to evaluate that in a separate step equals that's gone. So all I'm left with on the right hand side is x squared. Now, look what we have shaping up here. Okay, you've got a power of 2. Always be mindful of that. This, of course, is a quadratic. So how we solve our quadratics is we usually get it all over to one side, put it equal to 0, and then your two approaches to solve quadratics is to either factorize and solve or use the minus b formula. So I'm just going to tidy everything over to the right-hand side, given as I have a positive x squared on the right-hand side already. And that will be adding 3x to both sides to get rid of the minus 3x and take away 54 from both sides uh, to get rid of the 54. So there we go. We have it all tidied over to one side equals 0. As I said, you can do the minus b formula if you like to solve this. 
or we can factorize to solve it. I'm going to factorize to solve it. It's a nice easy one to factorize because of course we've only got a 1x squared so it'll be x times x and then of course we need to think about what times what is a minus 54 but we'll add together to make a plus 3. So that would be um, 9 times 6 uh, but the signs, of course, would have to be different to give you a minus 54 when multiplying these. And, of course, to get a plus 3x, it would have to be a plus 9 and minus 6. So plus 9 and minus 6. So if these two things are multiplied to equal 0, that implies that x plus 9 is equal to 0 or x minus 6 is equal to 0. So take away 9 on both sides here and we get x is equal to minus 9. Add 6 to both sides here and we get x is equal to 6. Now at this point what you always want to do, because you're dealing with logs, you need to be very careful in that sometimes both of these answers will not uh, hold true in the context of this question. So we want to just check that out. And it's always going to be the problem is usually with the negative, by the way. So just taking this, for example, if that was a true result, then um, subbing it back into what we had originally, okay, uh, we have this, technically. And if you're subbing in a minus 9, we have an issue straight away with just this element uh, alone, okay? Because if you try that on the calculator, um, log of a minus nine, okay, in the base three is of course a math error. And the reason is with, especially with the negatives, as I said, is because if you were to just convert just this green part on its own, as I said, in power form, it would be three to the power of something is equal to minus nine. Now that's where the issue arises, of course, because there's no power of three that will give you a negative. Like even if you have a negative one, three to the power of minus one, with our laws of indices, when you have a power of a minus one, it's the minus is one over, remember that? And then you have three to the power of one. So that's equal to one third. So even if you have a negative power, you'll still always end up with uh, a positive result. So you'll never end up with a negative result. No matter what power you put in there, you'll never end up with a negative result. Hence why this becomes a math error on the calculator. So the only solution that we can take here is x is equal to six. Okay, and our last example is this one, all right? Um, so, if you feel confident, press pause. If you want a hint, listen on. Uh, we have two issues straight away. The first one being the fact that we don't have the same base. So immediately what you're gonna want to do is change that base. Uh, you're also going to want to deal with the fact that you've got this 3 in front, okay? Now, we've dealt with that before, but remember, we can't go about doing anything until we get rid of that 3 there. Uh, so, we're going to want to use our third law to put that 3 as a power, and you're going to want to use your change of base law in order to get a base of 3. Okay, pause the video now if you want to give it a go. Okay, so here we go. We're going to, first of all, as I said, deal with that 3 there. So I'm going to bring that up as 3 cubed is equal to 4. Okay, so now that gives me log x in the base 3 plus uh, 3 cubed, of course, is 27 in the base x is equal to 4. And the next thing I'm going to have to deal with, of course, is this. Okay, I need to have this as a base of 3 if I can do anything with it. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the change of base law. So remember with your change of base law, log 27 the base x is equivalent to, uh, put in your new base, and it's going to be 27 in the new base, log of 27 in the new base, divide by log of the old base in the new base. Okay, now what I can do here because I've all numbers on the top here, I can evaluate the log of 27 in the base 3. And again, you can do it on the calculator if you wish. Base 3, 27. And of course, the answer's got to be 3 because 3 to the power of 3 is equal to 27. So 3 over log x in the base 3. Right. 
So now what I'm going to do is instead of log 27 in the base x, I'm going to rewrite it as 3 over log x in the base 3. Now this looks very complicated, okay? Um, what we always want to do whenever we have any fraction in an equation is we always want to get rid of the denominator and so we multiply by whatever we have underneath the line. Now, I don't really want to get into multiplying by logs. That's gonna make my life very, very uh, difficult. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna substitute something in for the log x in the base three something that's going to be much easier to work with. And then I can always put the log x and base 3 in uh, at, back in at the end. So I'm going to let y equals log x and the base 3. And so uh, anywhere I have log x and the base 3, I'm now going to sub in y. So that will change my equation to look like y plus 3 over y is equal to 4. So that's a lot easier to digest than, of course, this one. So what I would do here is if I have a divide by y, as I said, what I would want to do is multiply by y to get rid of it. OK, but of course, if I do that to one term in the equation, I've got to do it to everything in the equation. So everything gets multiplied uh, by y. That will get rid of that. And then what I'm left with is y times y is y squared plus 3, because that's gone, so there's just a 3 left, is equal to 4 times y is 4y. So now what I have here, of course, this is shaping up to look like a quadratic. So again, get everything to one side. I'm going to take away the 4y from that side, and I'm left with this. And of course, how do you solve a quadratic? You've got your two options, as we came across before. You can factorize to solve it, or you can use the minus b formula. Again, I'm gonna to factorize to solve it. It's a nice easy one uh, with just a one y squared. So y times y, and again, looking at the three, uh, I need numbers that will multiply to make three, but add together to make a minus four. So that would be a three times one, but both signs would have to be minus time, times minus to make a plus three, so that the minus three minus one would be a minus four y when added. So that will leave me with minus 3 is equal to 0 or minus 1 is equal to 0, y minus 1 is equal to 0, which implies that y is equal to 3 or y is equal to 1. Okay, now just be very careful here. Don't think that you're done. We've only solved for y, but of course remember y is equal to log x in the base 3. So we now have to come back and substitute this back in. So I have log x in the base 3 is equal to 3. And log x in the base 3 is equal to 1. And remember, when we get to this point with solving, the easiest thing to do is put it into power form. So 3 is the base and 3 is the power. So x is equal to 27 on that side. Uh, 3 is the base, 1 is the power, and x is equal to 3. And both of them are positive. All right, so positive logs, so that there's not going to be an issue like I came across in the last example where one of them will not work when substitute back into the original equation. So my final answers are x equals 27 and x is equal to 3.